All right, welcome back to Driveway Party. This week, oh. we have Steven here. All right, so we were just talking. We have to do uh, the Slappy Stage 2 cam and the PAC 1218 valve springs. Uh, so with the heads installed without taking them off, you have to pressurize the cylinders to hold the valve shut while there's no valve spring on there. Uh, sometimes when you pressurize the cylinder, the engine will try to turn because that's how engines work. So to take, to take the cam out, you have to take the harmonic balancer off, but with the balancer not on there and no flywheel on there, it's hard to hold the engine from spinning. So we'll do the valve springs first so that we can stick a pry bar through the crank pulley to keep oh, it from oh, yes. spinning. I mean, you could do it either way first, but it, it'll make your life easier if you do the valve springs first. So we're gonna go ahead and take the rockers off and the push rods out on both sides. Uh, you probably don't have to keep them organized, but you know, that well, people the say that the-, the rockers easy, you just pick the whole fucking tray up. Yeah, well, the one baby boomers like to tell you that you have to keep the push rods with the <laughs> rockers because they wear into each other. I don't really the know if that's true. You have to worry about that is when you see miswear on the end of the push rod when you pull it apart. Well, Which there's, when we go to do my motor, we're not gonna talk about and you're not gonna look at the push rods because they're just going back. It's impossible that this 220,000 mile engine has anywhere, <laughs> so we're not gonna worry about it. <laughs> Literally impossible. That's perfect. All right, so I'm not gonna bother doing a time lapse because these are all eight millimeters. I'm just gonna take the impact gun and just zip, 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 zip. So let's do it. This one push rod has a little bit of different wear. We could always rob a push rod from the other engine and a rocker. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll do that. Well, for now let's just let's just lay them as we found them. So we unbolted the rail that holds all the rockers as well as the ones on this side. See that? They just all come up together. And then we're laying them over here. So this one came from the passenger side. This one came from the driver's side. We're gonna lay all the push rods out. I said, I was literally gonna lay the push rods in the gap so they can't roll. Works for me. All right, now that all the rockers and push rods are out, we have this adapter tool. It has uh, like a air chuck fitting. And then this is the same thread as a spark plug with an O-ring. And you thread this into the cylinder where the spark plug goes. And we're gonna put air pressure into the cylinder to keep the cylinder from moving and to hold the valve closed. So we just put air into the cylinder and we can hear, you can hear air going into the crankcase, which means it's going past the rings. So you definitely don't have to gap the rings because there's plenty of blow by on this, on this guy. So, so here's the tool, how it works is it sits right in here. Yeah, we'll just get that out of the way. Well, pull that out. Am I forgetting something? Wait, this doesn't work. <laughs> we have to find different bolts. These bolts are too long. All right, look. I robbed two bolts from the timing cover because everything is the same thread on this. Super convenient. I use those bolts here, and you tighten down the center locking nut, and then this. Oh, you hear that? Air escaped. So we have to. Keepers are a little snug. We have to turn up the pressure. Give it all of it. Yeah. What? Oh, you're you're building it. it hey, you're building it for boost, aren't you? Sixty psi. Yeah, there you go. There we go. I bet you those keepers are good and snug in there, dude. Damn, we need more air. Okay. We deleted that regulator and just put the air hose 
shop air straight into the cylinder and the keepers broke free. Might have to go a little more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, bitch. Here we go. Just one. You want me to put these in the pan, right? <laughs> Drop them right in the pan. I can do that for you. So now we loosen it. Just toss these. All right. Uh, I can't back the nut off without it going flying. I'm just gonna. Loosen this guy. Ooh, grab the bolt. Yeah. We're gonna be taking the pan off, so even if they fall in, technically it's fine. Well, I don't want to do that. So there you go. Your springs are free. So we're going to replace the springs, but not the top hats. The top hats, I believe, get replaced. We have. Pack valve springs. I don't remember if I scotch taped these shut or if maybe they're used. Yours came with scotch tape on them? <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna grab two. And pop them right there. We're going to put these on here. Actually, just for a quick second, Side by side, they do look a little taller. So these are stiffer springs. We're not gonna take any measurements or anything. We're just gonna install them and not ask any questions. That's how we do it here. So we have the keepers. There's a skinny side and a fat side, skinny side down. Uh-oh. Please don't say uh-oh. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's like not sitting perfectly straight in there, but. Very much. Let's oh, do a little nice. massage. -y. The other one fell right in, well, and okay. then we pick up the camera, and now this one doesn't fit. Well, let's take. What if you push? This whole thing's slightly cocked. If you just push up on a corner a little bit. With the pry bar? Yeah, just ever so slightly. I have one free hand if you need help. Not really. This way. There. Very nice, very good for you. Okay. Now that they're on there, all you have to do is loosen this off. And the keepers will go in the little hole. They'll do your job. And hold the spring. That's it. Loose. Voila. Okay, that is one cylinder valve springs changed. So we'll go ahead and do the rest of them. Oh, selfie time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how shaky this is. We got you on a long selfie stick. We got the extendo mag out. I'm sorry, I moved on to the next cylinder and I put the air in there and so much air was coming out of the exhaust port. So we hit it. Wait, you want to hit it? Because it's fun. Yeah, yeah. We, we hit the valve we to try to seat it, and it made a cool noise. <laughs> it's like a, it's like it's, a pop gun. <laughs> I saw a pop. <laughs> it's so much fun. Do it again. It's got, guess what? It's compression. So all we did is crack the valve open. Where did that bolt just fall? That was the one for the hold down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And uh, it instantly reseated, and now there's no air coming out of the exhaust valve. It could have just been dirt and grime from having uh, open so. intake runners. Yeah, because 
the cam, some of these are always open, so it might have just been on this lobe and well, some dirt got I'm in there. So yeah, so I thought that was funny. It's cool. This part is like probably one of those things they're supposed to be wearing safety glasses for. Because <laughs> they're they're like compressed springs and That's okay. you're, you're releasing the bolt. <laughs> And, well, I'm standing over it, so I don't want any shrapnel to hit you. Oh, okay. I'm being a good friend. You know what would happen? It'll bounce off the forehead and then hit me in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Your bolt's just laying here on the back. <laughs> what are you doing with the old springs? Uh, I put them in the box as I take them in. Okay. Out. Whew. Just a couple, you know, rocket scientists putting together an LS. Okay, how long has it been? What time is it? I don't I even know where my phone is. I think we did the valve springs in about an hour. Which it's made pretty good time. Can be improved on. Not bad. I mean, we were bullshit hanging out. So. Ugh. We might need a breaker bar. For this. Cheater pipe. Turn. I got it to turn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I thought I was gonna flip the whole operation, but I can add another pry bar. Here. What's smarter, not harder? Oh, Polish power. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It's like tight and moving slow to the point I was like, the fucking thing. That's what I think it's gonna do. Need a little pole lock around. Okay, nice. So, oh, this yeah. is the hardest part of doing a can and valve springs, getting this dampener. I keep calling it a dampener, it's just a pulley. Actually, it is a dampener, it's rubber. Is it? Yeah. I never know that. So, all right, so we have a new harmonic ba balancer puller. So. You may think that your three draw puller is gonna take this right off or the generic AutoZone, whatever, auto parts store, free one. That's where you're wrong. You kiddo. will spend two weekends of frustration trying to get this off and you may not even get it off. This kit I got off of Amazon as of December, 2020, it was $35. It's an OEM tool, part number 25090. Just get the right tool. It's not worth the frustration. That being said, this is brand new and not used. I have not used this one yet. But I have we're, used- We are all learning together. I've used somebody else's and it works. So. I do not fully remember how to use it. I'm gonna grab the right French. Back here. They have to come out later. Alright, so it comes with these. They're basically like push rods. I heard that you could actually use, oops, use push rods. They just don't have a hole in them. So different cranks have different depths. You have to find the one that goes in there. Uh, I guess you start with the short ones, if I remember correctly. Let's start with the all the way shortest one. So that goes in there. Oops. Actually, I'm going to start with the second shortest one. Oh, it's stuck. I might have to get in there with pliers. I guess we don't need that in there anymore. Well, I think we do have to. Oh, How the fuck did it? You're, well, you're hitting the block here. 
Yeah. Oh, can you, oh, wait, can you slide in? I told you, try to kill me. Alright. So, look here. It's meant to. There you go. I think we might have to go to the longer one. I think you're going to run out of thread. Well, let's just... So I bottomed out the threads. You need a longer push rod. I literally the first time I did this, no joke. I spent all weekend Fucking like with running the park stores, running, borrowing different people's pullers. I think I broke one of them. Thirty-five dollars. Well, I cannot mine. believe that little snap like I did it. I have to tame one of mine. Mine one in the back. I guess let's take the timing cover off. That's the best time, right? Zippy boy. We didn't even have to hold it with a wrench. No, I was just to ride. It's actually easier to drop the pan because they bolt together and it'll be rubbing on the gasket. Let's just try. So you get should pop. There we go. You have porch clean? No, there's no parts cleaner here. Oh. I was gonna, we'll clean, that. That I was gonna clean that for you, but the gasket actually looks like it could be reduced. I, w okay. I wouldn't even worry about taking it off then. Yeah, it looks like it's on there. So uh, I don't remember. I don't think the oil pump has to come off. 
We should no, spin you, the engine now. Yeah, line it up. Plug through these three, pull this out, take the big gear out, lay, lay the chain out. Yeah. Okay. How do you want to turn the motor over? We'll put the bolt back in. Uh, you don't need a new timing chain ever. All right. I figured even a stock replacement would be better than nothing. I mean, yeah. I don't see the bottom line. But I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, like a pink feather, you just like. So we're just going to put this straight down, the timing mark, I think it has to go just a touch more, right there. Got the 10 millimeter? That's all we got, I got it. So you got a pen. It, it's just the it's the steam port. Oh, and oil. Well, we're just gonna do it quick, and then turn it back. So, pop the gear off. See if you can get the chain out of there. Ten mils for the paint. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spin. We have the crank lined up where it needs to be. I'm just gonna spin the cam because if you have a push rod or a, a lifter, drop it, won't come out. so the lifters are usually up at the cam and right now since the engine's upside down, but you want gravity to make it fall. But sometimes they're a little snug in there and they need a little bit of a pushing. So just spinning the cam, one complete rotation, should push all the lifters away from the cam so we can pull the cam out. All right, spun it a couple times. Now we need to pull this back off. You have a cam retaining cover. Same size as everything. Fits. There is an O-ring behind here. If you forget the O-ring, you'll have low oil pressure, and you'll be buying yourself a new engine. I don't want to do that. So it's important to make sure that this O-ring is in there and you put it back in. It looks like the O-ring is sealing because it's dry yeah. in here. Yeah. So now that that's out, you can use the bolts from I believe you use the long water pump bolts no yes yep water pump bolts look at that guys they're the same thread and the same 10 millimeter head are you surprised it took so many years for GM to finally be consistent what <laughs> All right, so you kind of want to imagine that the far end has a lot of weight on it, it's going to sink. So when you pull, you, you kind of want to try to hold the back end up. If you yank too hard, you might pull the bearing out. Really? With you. Yeah, if they're pressed in there. Like, it would be like a slide. Oh, okay. 
Imagine a slide hammer. Here we have it. 4.8 LS cam. Now, these engines with over 200,000 miles on them, there is not anything in here that's not oily. So, you're gonna make a mess. That being said, you probably don't even have to lube up your new cam. You can just slam it in, because everything's oily. What are you laughing about? I was looking about to be like, oh, you got any assembly lube or oil to drizzle on it at least? No. Ugh. We're not doing that. It hurts a little bit. I got a knife. You have a knife? Home Depot, seven dollars. D wall, tactical. <laughs> this is a roller rocker, a roller lifter engine. Oh, yours came way nicer than mine. Why did yours come out? My can didn't have any of this to hold it nice. It was bouncing around in the box. Apparently, it's a Where'd you buy yours from? Speedway. Okay, so it's not like. Where'd you get yours Some from? people sell it as an Elgin can, but they're regrabbed. Oh, so. No, but it, if you bought it from a reputable person. Yeah, it's Speedway. Uh, sloppy Stage 3 Elgin. But, uh, like I said, 1841 oil everywhere in this. I'm coming, I'm coming. You good? Another key important thing to do is to be very careful to not accidentally look into the engine. If you see a cam bearing, it's probably I'm, I'm going to be worn out. No, I'm laughing because anybody and everybody that I've ever talked to still haven't done my swap for that. If you don't everybody look, said, no, you don't look. You don't look. It's kind of like you told me, don't pull, don't pull the heads either, but I, I pulled them. Well, it's been proven. If you look in there, they're worn. If you don't look in there, fine. you'll never have an issue. Well, you can't see it, it's not perfect. The bolt spec is a little bit higher, even though it's the same bolt. You go in a circle because the cam is circular. <laughs> That's how you do a cam and an LS engine. It. Done. That's it. So let's drop her in and let's get it going. Alright. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. I'm sure most of you guys have stuff sitting in your garage hey, and on jack stands. I feel more confident to go home and do mine now. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs>